Hello everybody, I am Nico D. So for my Zima board 832 I bought a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet dongle USB 3. So the last days I've been trying to get the best network performance that I could have. But I had a lot of problems. So the speeds that I got were 40 megabytes a second max. And I didn't know what was going on. But after a bit of searching I found out that the transfer rate on the Zima board itself was very bad. So if I copied from one SSD connected to SATA to another SSD I got very bad performances. I don't know why it is, I haven't found out what's the cause precisely but I did find a fix. So when I did the same with Windows it worked perfectly at 2 or 300 megabytes a second. When I did it with Casa OS, so Debian Bullseye, I only got 40 megabytes a second. When I did it with Arm Jammy, I also got 40 megabytes a second. So then one day I thought I'm gonna change everything that I can change. So I took another SSD, I took another network cable, I took another Zima board. I took another operating system, so Arm Noble, so that is Ubuntu 24.04. The upcoming release and I tried it with that and everything was working. Suddenly everything was great. With Samba I got 70 megabytes a second with the Linux clients that is expected. I have the same with my NanoPi R6s. With SFTP I got 100 megabytes a second that's better that's good. But with FTP I can go up to 280 megabytes a second when connecting from a Linux server to a Linux client. So that always has been a problem for me when I connect with a Linux computer to my NAS then it is slow. When I connect with my Windows computer I always get 280 megabytes a second. So now I found a solution to also get 280 megabytes a second with my ROG 5B from the Zima board. So Arm Noble seems to fix the problem where the transfer rate is very bad between two SSDs. And thanks to that I can get good network performance with every 2.5 gigabit Ethernet board. So let me show you how I am using the Zima board. So first off I've got my 2.5 gigabit Ethernet dongle plugged into USB 3. Then I've got two SATA boards or two SATA SSDs, so one is two terabytes, the other is one terabyte, both are Samsung. So for power, I am using the Zima board, it's power plug here, and I plugged in a SATA power splitter, so this has got four times SATA power, so I'm using them to power the SATA, and then I am using for each SATA cable to run them. So first off to get my Armbian Noble image I ran Armbian Jammy that I downloaded from the download page from UEFI 86 on Armbian downloads. I ran that on USB so go into the BIOS press delete and select the correct boot device. On there I search for Armbian build. Here it is. I've got a lot of videos showing how to do this, but I will quickly show how I've done it for my noble image here. So all you need is git installed, I already have git installed, so that's okay. Then you need to clone the Armbian project, so git clone depth. I already have it here so I will not do this step, but I will just show you what you have to do. After that cd build and then dot slash compile dot sh and if you want you can set export equals yes. That gives you a bit more options, I don't know if it's necessary for noble, might be. So do not change any kernel configurations. Then we go down to UEFI x86, there it is. There I select current. Then I select Noble, here it is, and I built a server image, I did install a desktop on it, but I like to start with a server image. So this doesn't take that long, maybe 15 minutes, then write that image onto an SD card or a USB device and boot it. 
Now I will install my Zimabart 432 to be my file server. So I will show you every step that I do. So I plug in my SD to USB adapter and I open GNOME disks. There I select the correct device. I delete the partitions that are on it and I restore disk image. And so it is in my home folder. No, not downloads, home, builds, outputs, images, and there it is. So I write that to my SD card. And now let's unbox my Zima board 432. So that one has got 4 gigs of RAM. The others have got 8 gig. For a final server you do not need a lot of memory. Even 1 gigabyte would be enough. Alright, so here is my old FastNAS. So this is the NanoPi R6S. But the problem with this was it only has got one USB 3 port. So I was using one of these with it, but uh, it can only power one SSD over one USB 3 port. So I couldn't connect any more uh, of these fast ones. So for me the Zima board is a real upgrade. I can connect up to three, so two on the SATA and one on the USB 3. So that is great. So let's unplug everything over here. So this is the Zima board 832. Here it is. So what do I need? I will need this one with Noble on it. So let's put that in the USB 3 port. I will need this one for my 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. Let's plug that in. I will need this one for my display. So you can do everything what I will do without a display. So you just have to connect with SSH. So first check out what your IP address is, then SSH, uh, root at uh, your IP address, uh, the password will be root 1234, so the password is 1234, and then you have to change the passwords. So what do I need next? Of course, all this. to do is plug in the power supply, plug it in, press delete, That's gonna be it. Yes, that's it. F10, and we are in Armbian. So I do the initial setup. Then I do apt update and apt upgrade. And then I install a desktop. You do not need to install a desktop, but I like to have a desktop to debug things. So apt install Ubuntu dash desktop. After that reboots. So here we are in Armbian Noble on x86. So if we go to settings system about 
there we see Armbian Noble unofficial so let's change the name to Zima board I change my appearance so I have a video where I show how I set up my Ubuntu desktop watch that if you want to see it I'm not gonna show it all here in this video so I install a few apps so GNOME Shell extensions GNOME Shell Extension Manager, GNOME Tweaks, LM Sensors, GVFS Backends, GNOME User Share, Genie, GNOME System Monitor, and I forgot one, GNOME Disk Utility. So I install that. I set up my desktop the way I want it, but watch that video for that. Now let's install Samba. So just sudo apt install Samba. Then set it up. So sudo genie, but you could use nano if you are using a server image. So I am using genie, so sudo genie slash etc slash samba slash smb.conf. And there I add all this. So I share my media pad, that is where my mounted drives are mounted. So I don't want no guests. Writable, browsable, mask and directory mask, and only valid user is Nicodi. And then I create a password for Nicodi, so sudo smb passwd dash a Nicodi. I type two times my new password. Then I restart the Samba service, so sudo service smbd restarts. And now Samba is installed and working. So now there is one more thing to do that is installing VSFTPD for my FTP server. So sudo apt install VSFTPD. Then to set it up, sudo genie slash etc slash VSFTPD.conf. There we make sure anonymous enable is no, local enable is yes, write enable we enable it. And I type force dash dot dash files equals yes. That is for my Linux files, like I've got a lot of games that use dot files. If I don't have that, then I will have problems copying. And now we need to set the FTP users, so sudo genie slash etc slash FTP users. And before root we set a hashtag, so root can log in. And now we also restart this service, so sudo service vsftpd restart. And now we are fully set up. So now let's switch to my rock 5 b and show you how things are going. So here I am on my rock 5 b So this is my NVMe on my rock 5 b And here we have UEFI x86. So Zima boards. And here we are on my one terabyte drive. So this is with Samba. It isn't performing well, I don't know why it is performing this bad, it is again 40 megabytes, but that's no problem. So if we connect with SFTP, so SFTP and then the IP address. And if we again try the same, then we get about 100 megabytes a second. That is good, but not perfect yet. So now let's open FileZilla and connect to the same IP address.
username Nico D, my password that I set up, and the port is 21. And now let's do the same thing. So let's copy this file to my NVMe. And as you see, 290 megabytes a second. So that is what I wanted. With my Windows PC, I always have 280 megabytes a second with Samba. But there is a problem with Linux. On Linux devices, Samba doesn't perform well. So for that, SFTP is better. But FTP is perfect. So I am using both. If I want something quickly done, then I will use SFTP. If I need to copy a lot of files or huge files, then I will use FTP. So that is it for today. I still don't know precisely what the cause is of my problems, but I do know that I found a solution that works for me. So thank you all for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel. See you later. Bye.